Welcome back to the shop. Today we're making an angled survey tray. I went ahead and pre-milled the bottom. With the one edge of the board jointed, I'm going to rip the boards to width here to table saw. I'm going to take an amount off one edge, move the fence an eighth of an inch, and run the other edge. So here's the bottom of the tray glued up in the clamps. I'm going to let it dry for a couple hours. While that's going on, I can turn my attention to the sides. I'll start here at the joiner, plane one side flat, run them through the thickness planer, then back here to the joiner, square an edge. So when we next meet up, we'll be at the table saw. I went ahead and ripped the other edge parallel to the table saw. I didn't think he really needed to see me watch rip boards. But the first step to make the angle tray sides is to rip the bottom edge. The saw is already set at the desired angle and the rip fence is set in position. While the fence is still on the right hand side of the saw, I want to take this piece of laminated plywood that we're going to use for a jig a little later. There is a separate jig video coming out. And I want to make this bevel rip. I had to move the rip fence to the left hand side of the blade. The reason I had to do that is I needed what's called a parallel cut. And as you watch the material come from the saw, you'll understand why. By doing it this way, I can keep the high point of the miter up. And I don't have to worry about the point of the miter going underneath the fence and kicking back. I've got a feather board to hold the stack in place. And I'm going to keep my push stick in play during this cut. The blade's still at the same angle, 35 degrees. It hasn't changed. What has changed is the rip fence position, and I've added my stack dado headset. Now, I've went ahead and spun the cutter by hand to make sure it clears, and it will. And as you can see, I'm set up to cut the groove for the bottom of the tray. Because it's such a, it's an excessive amount of material, I'm going to do in a couple passes. I'm all set up for the first. Notice I've got the feather board employed to hold stack down to the table and against the fence. As you can see with the last pass, I had the blade set the final height, I ran the piece through, and then I ran it through again to help me get rid of any lumps and bumps. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing it this way on the table saw, you can definitely use the router table, but you're going to have to make a cradle to hold the stack at the angle you need. So as you can see, once we had the plywood ripped, I glued on a piece of quarter inch plywood down here at the base. I did a couple things at the table saw. I ran two grooves for glue, so I don't have to worry about ooze out here on the extreme inside corner. And I also held the plywood back from the back edge, so whether I attach it to the miter gauge or use my miter saw, I don't have to worry about uh, the base sticking out. So we're going to let this dry for a couple hours. And then I'll show you how we use the jig. 
as you can see now with the base glued on, uh, you can see how the compound miter jig is going to work to hold the stack in place. You can also use this in the power miter box too. So I need to cut some miters. Let's go and cut them. So I made a few changes. Uh, the jig works wonderfully. I went ahead and cut all the ends. 145 on, on the ends. Here's the changes. We turned the head to the 45 degrees to the other side to zero. I've added a stop lock down to far end to control the length of the pieces. From long point to long point, it's 28 inches. I'm ready to cut the bottom. Uh, I was hoping to run it be between the fence and rails with the wide side. Not like this. But, unfortunately, the size panel I need and my rear fence capacity, I just don't have. So this is what we call make do. The other option is to use a circular saw and a straight edge clamp. So, let's just take our time. And hope for the best. I'm ready to cut the sheet stack down to its final width via cross cutting. So I got the sled pulled out. I'll make the cross cuts right now. In order to get the bottom to fit the groove, I have to cut a rabbit, and to do that, I'm going to have to cut it vertically, on edge. So here's the angle tray. Just dry fit with a band clamp. I'm going to have to come up with something better than band clamp. But I'll hold it together just long enough for you guys to get an idea of how big this tray is. From long point to long point, it's 28 inches. And it's 2 inches high. And the angle splayed out is 35 degrees. The bottom's a quarter inch thick. Made from three boards glued up. Then I'm going to go ahead tonight and pre-stain before I glue up the frame. So I went ahead and I glued on some blocks that I cut to try to match the angles. Yes, I know they're inverted. Um, I was able to glue them on with a rub joint, let them dry for a couple hours. And then once they were dry, I was able to glue up the project. As you can see, I've got a coat of stain on the bottom. It's just the first coat. There's going to be a couple more coats going on it. So now I want to go ahead, remove the clamps, cut the blocks off, sand them smooth, and then we cut the spline so our table's off. So with the glue box cleaned off the piece and the light sanding, I'm ready to cut the spline miters. I'm here at the table saw. I've got my spline joint jig out. I've got my eighth inch blade, which happens to be from my data lead set. It'll work. I'm not thrilled about that. But notice I got the piece clamped. And I'm going to take my time feeding it through. Your prayers are appreciated. This is going to be a fun piece to run.
So after I got the spline grooves cut, I melted some spline material up, went ahead and glued them in place. I'm going to let it dry overnight and then tomorrow I'll trim them off, do some final sanding and put the rest of the stain on. So here's the finished tray. I ended up painting it a dark walnut. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now get on in, out to the shop and build something, will ya?